time on Custom Works, we're getting serious about air suspension. Let's get to the workshop. So we're fitting airbags on the front of the Mercedes SS. This is what we start out with here. Already we've remounted um, this suspension cross member so it's a few inches lower. We took the factory mounts off and we've welded that to there. Obviously this will be uh, all tidied up. This is our front clip and this is where the spring normally mounts and there's normally a plate on here as well which I've unbolted and that holds the spring at the bottom. And this is suspension for a coil spring, not an airbag. Um, and there are ways of making this different. So first way you can do, you can drop a plate on air, you can weld a piece of scaffold bar in here and put a plate on the bottom and uh, consider that to be a mount. Now, I'm not gonna do that. One, it just don't seem enough to hold the whole car. I know people do it like that, but I'm not gonna do it. And two, it literally looks like you've butchered an airbag in. So what I'm, I want to make is suspension for an airbag, not convert springy suspension to bag, go the full, the full way. And you know what, it only takes probably half a day more and you get it right. So then, I've got this car set up as it should be with this lower arm parallel to the floor and that is where you should make your mounts for your airbag. Do not squash them right down. Put a load of zip ties around them. Put them in there. And then try and make your plate like it's on full drop. No, you fit them at ride height. They can move up and down. This can get bigger, it can get smaller. But it, the car has to be set at ride height. So then what we need here is as we're at ride height, we can now fit a plate in here and we can strongly gusset that back up to here, to this top mount to the chassis. So on here, there would have been, I've cut it off now, but there's something like this. Holds a spring and a shock absorber. We're not having springs though, so that can go. And as you can see, this is no good for an airbag. But that, cut, I've cut that off. So now, once I've plated this, I've got a lovely foundation that I can now make a bracket to mount to the top of the airbag. I can make a plate to fit on here and then I can run my braided line through here. Um, once this plate's on as well I can easily get to the bolts. I'm not going to be like up that tube trying to do it. This will not be some spring suspension adapted to airbags. This will be suspension that takes airbags. Rather than make an adaption, I've made, I'm seeing, it, I'm seeing this less of an adaption, more of a conversion to air. So that's how it goes. But um, all of these things, you know, if it looks wrong, it is wrong. You know, if it all looks seam welded, plated and strong, it's probably right. Another thing I'm going to do in this is this top pivot where the top arm fits to, I've already welded that there, but what I'll be doing is I'll be putting a secondary plate in from there down um, just to make that super strong. And also I'll be plating up here and around the chassis. So any strength it seems like I've cut out here will be regained by it being um, back to the chassis. And this plate that I'm gonna make over here uh, you know, will be fabricated in very heavy uh, steel and uh, it will be incredibly strong. Because let's not forget, all the weight of the car is on this, on that bag. Everything is on that. This car at full drop sits really, really low. We don't want anything ever going wrong. Plenty of space around the bag, heavy, heavy mounts for everything. And, uh, you know, when we come to uh, piping this up, you need braided lines, hard lines, 
Uh, not the stuff you get in Lego. Not that. Not the pushy pushy. Things bolted. PTFE. Stuff like that. Strong, strong, strong. It's all that's holding you off the road. Okay, so the first thing we've done is unbolted the plate that fits to these um, these cast arms because, of course, we can't weld to cast. Uh, well, you can, they'll snap off. But then I made these plates, and these plates will bolt into there, and then we can screw them down. I've actually put, um, this is going to have one, two, three, and four bolts in there, just to make sure it doesn't move. I've slotted this hole so that there is just this one bolt in the bottom of the bag but what I'll probably do is weld this into there because it needs to be right that way and I don't think I'll ever get a nut on the back for as far as I want it over there to avoid everything. Now I've got this bag in here and this arm parallel to the ground your bag should sit on there and then your top plate, your top plate should sit on there, and this will always be your ride height. This is your ride height here with the bag at its, at its sort of relaxed state. So as you're driving along, you're like this. The bag's always going to be straight, this movement here is going to be right, or your steering geometry is going to be better. Well, it's not going to be better, it's going to be exactly as it should be from the factory. And you're not going to get any like hideous bump steer or anything like that. When this is parallel, that is always your ride height. Um, if you want to go lower than that, then you've got to notch your chassis, drop the body. But with your suspension, how it is, when that is level, that is your ride height. You can drive lower. This car could, would be able to go a little bit lower, but the problem there is is that then, as the bag goes down, the geometry on the steering changes. So when your car looks its coolest, it should look like this. Okay, and so the thing with air suspension, what a lot of people do is they make their car so it sits on the floor, but then to drive it, it looks like some hideous spider. I would say if you're on air and your arch comes up, and your wheel arch is there and the tyre is not sort of tucked behind it when you're driving, all you've made is a car that looks higher than it could have been if you just chopped a couple of coils out and two lowering blocks, you know. If you can't drive it when it looks awesome, it's a little bit pointless. If it only looks awesome parked, well, that's just no good. We've always got to think, ways round this. On a normal car, I know, I'm in, I'm in a such a privileged, privileged position that I usually make the body and because I make the body I can body drop in there everything I do is body dropped and you know body dropping if you've got a chassis and you're putting basically if you've got a chassis and you're putting the cab off something else or another car body over that and you get this wrong there is no excuse because you can get it dead right every single time and what I'm going to do with this I'm going to build this slammed so it will drive looking awesome and then it will go lower than that and, and when it's parked it will be just insanely low, like broken low, but when it comes up it will just look like a slammed car and it will fully drive, not like it's got the wheels hanging out of the arch. If you're, uh, if, if you're working on um, like an old truck, something like that, an old car, and you're changing the massive truck wheels, now when you slam this down, that wheel won't fill your arch anymore. So great thing to do, you make the arch smaller around your wheel. That will always make the car look better when it's down. Also, you can lower your arches. Lowering an arch on a car, two inch on a decent lowering job, will make it look really slammed. Also, and I did this on the non-standard. I extended the sills on the side, or rocker panel, if you're elsewhere, and that gave me two and a half inch drop on the sill as well. And that, that's really easy to do. You can just get a piece of steel, or whatever you want, aluminium, rolled up, drop it down the edge of the car, the car looks lower, and no one will see that two inch drop. 
along, you know, between wheel to wheel. And like I say, with the arches, if you drop the arches down, yeah, it's a bit of body work, but your car can look slammed and drive without any crazy bump steer with all that original geometry still at the front, but with none of the sort of cost. And then when you park it, it will sit and it will look super slammed. You know, when you see the arch going almost to the centre of the wheel on like a 20 inch wheel, and it's like, my God, you know, how's that all got under there? And basically it comes down to the body and the chassis, this wheel and this suspension all being packaged in a way that will all tuck under, it will steer, it will do all of those things. So my advice would be, number one, <laughs> always make the body, because then even if your chassis is a bit high, you can always lower the body down, it'll always look great. If you're not doing that, and you can't get it slammed to the floor, or if it's going to look like a spider when it's driving, you can always lower your arches, or pinch the arches in, and there's, if you want to know how to do the pinching the arches in, I'm not doing it at the minute, on all of the big sort of programs on, you know, Can Dig It or Texas Metal or anything like that, they often will pinch the arch to make the wheel fit in the arch. But it's all about the wheel in relationship to the arch and the sill to how low the car looks. Just because you've got your bumper on the floor, don't mean it don't look all geeky at the side. Okay, so I've got my bag in, and my bag's sitting nice and square on this bottom plate. I've dropped my bottom plate on the top, and that's just sitting there, and the bag is at its natural, relaxed state. This is level to the floor, so I can weld my top mount into place. Now, I'm not going to weld it all the way because I don't want any hot rocks dropping onto the airbag, so I'm going to just put two decent tacks up here, and then we can look into the next stage. Okay, so that's it. That is the perfect measurement to do that. Oh my God, the bag's alive or something. Why is it trying to talk to me? Right, out it comes. And there we go, that's it. So this car will be able to sit super low, raise up and then drive. And to be honest, on an air system, you probably only need four or five inches to get a very low car up and mobile and drop down. You don't have to have, as I often hear people boasting, well, I've got 10 inches of lift. And you think, well, why do you want that? You're gonna drive your car through a flood or something. It's pointless. You so any adjustment in suspension has only got to be from the car being on the floor to being like sort of between four and six inches off the floor. And then that's it, you can go along. A lot of the time, really what it matters on is your minimum ride height should never be less than between the rim of the tire and the floor. So this space here, if you've got a low profile tire, you can go, you can go a lot lower with the lower, a lower profile tire. But if you were to have a puncture in this and it goes flat, what you don't want is when it's riding on the rim because of the puncture, is any major part of the car catching the floor and then sort of jackknifing the car in the road. So as long as you're always up more than, you know, your tire, it's called the scrub line, if you're above the scrub line, you will always be safe. So always keep, a, you know, keep an eye on that. If you want to go lower, go with a bigger inch rim and a lower profile tire so when that bursts, it hits the rim quicker, keeps the car off the floor. Now then, something I'll be doing with this car I will be going lower than the scrub line, but I will only be going lower than the scrub line with fiberglass panels. That in the event of a, a puncture in the tyre, the tyre would, and I'm talking blower, I'm not talking like a slow puncture that goes down over four days, I'm talking about a full nightmare scenario. You're on the motorway, tyre goes, car goes down, it's still got to ride on the rim, but as it drops, any fiberglass bits that I've put below that would shear off the car. It would, um, it would just scrape them off and the car will sit lower. So small bits, and with metal work as well, if your wing hangs lower, as long as there's no heavy framework around it, that'll just crunch up and you'll ride on your rim and you'll be, you'll, you know, 
You'll live to uh, tell everyone about how you uh, evaded death for the tenth time or whatever. But just bear all these things in mind because this stuff's dead serious and it's got to be done right. I don't want to make it sound too dramatic, but your life may depend on this. Right, and so this is going to be super safe. Obviously, I've cut off the old thing, turret, tower thing, whatever, that the spring and the shot went into. That's gone. And I've welded this piece of plate on here. And then, as you just saw when I set the bag, I also welded this plate on. And this plate is at the exact angle it needs to be with the bag relaxed. So, now I've gusseted up here and welded this plate in here, and then around this side, I've welded this plate in here that comes right back to the chassis and ties this plate directly in with the chassis, and then we gusseted it, gusseted above there. And there's little bits like this that when all the, the um, suspension strip just before the powder coat in, what I'll do is I'll get in there and weld all these. All these rubbers are going to be replaced anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. So now I need. I know from the other side there's some other bits that go in here because of course this bit has only got the strength of this on this side so we need to gusset under here as well and some more gussetting to do at the front. Right and so here's the other side which I prepared earlier which is just, just so incredibly strong. I am thinking on this that is this too incredibly strong? <laughs> so then on this job particularly on this, that I'm, I'm putting a lot of gusset plates on, I'm doing a lot of seam welding, and all of this is in 6mm plates, so these things are super strong. If you're ever doing anything like this, anything that's got to be super strong, make it so it's like 10 times stronger than it ever has to be, because to be honest, it's never going to be the thing, you'll never sit there regretting Oh, I wish I'd have made that so strong and safe. That will never happen. Although sitting there thinking, oh God, if I'd just seen well did that, you know, all of those people wouldn't have died. Okay then, so over to the plasma area. Plasaria, as I like to call it. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark this out. So if I mark just there. And then... After donning the shades, you can't really use a welding mask for this. It's not that bright that it's going to hurt your eyes. It is bright enough though that the minute you strike this, the welding mask goes totally flat. And then it's like welding. It's not quite bright enough to really light the welding thing up. And these glasses have steamed up because so it's icy cold in here again. Now, I shall cut this out. And there we go, that should be that should be cut out now, and just with the tap of the hammer, that will drop out. I'll take it over to the bench, clean it up a bit with the angle grinder. Right, let's get a hammer, let's tap that out. So then first, when you use a plasma cutter, um, you get all this, I think, I think the proper word is slag, but I, I'm not sure um, that's a, a suitable word to say anymore. Uh, this bit just knocks off. Don't have to grind any of this, it just knocks off. And look, I'm using like a hammer from a Disney film or something, you know. There we go, that stuff just knocks off. So never be there with a the grinder, because the grinder will grind it down and then it will be gone. It's not like the grinder will just flick it off. It's another thing I probably shouldn't say anymore. Anyway, um, I shall uh, get the grinder on there, grind that down. Like I say, I'm going to weld around this, and I'll probably weld him around uh, this top edge and down the side. But this edge will be at the side of the bag. So we want this to be sort of, you know, more, we want it to be bag friendly. So you could run your bare hand over it and there'll be no problems. We never want this to punch you the bag in any way.
plastic plate that's going to go down and make like that skirt around the bottom of the bag mount. It's going to make it a lot stronger. So let's go and tuck that in place and uh, see how it looks. Okay, and so this plate is going to go in around there and gusset this angle. So this angle can never close up. Um, and it, or indeed it will be all holding tension so it can never come out. Um, now I've just tacked this but of course I'm welding this over so what I'm going to do is I'm going to seam weld around, seam weld around here then tack this piece over that and then what I aim to do is over this weld come in with this piece of steel and sort of weld on top of that piece of welding. Um, on this angle it don't look like this back edge is quite right but I shall, uh, I shall carry on, I'm sure everything will work itself out. So, I'm going to seam weld around here, knock it off, and then get that tacked in. Now this is all super strong, but I'm going to make it a bit stronger. I'm going to add another plate, and I'm going to add that plate in there. Now what this will do, this will make again this a lot, lot stronger. This is going to be so strong, my lord. But I will weld that in, I'll make that and weld that in there, and it just gives this a nicer sweep down. But see if anyone ever looks under the car, you know, they look and they know this is a good, strong job. Let's have a look at that on the other side. Here's a piece in question, and it roots back, gives us this nice curve, this thing should be, and just brings us back into the chassis nice. So okay, and so from when I did the other side, I got these three templates. So what I'll do, I'm gonna get all of those cut out, weld them on, and then we'll have a great top bracket for the bag to sit on, and a really secure bag mount. And like I say, once all this is done and the chassis is stripped, I'll roll the chassis over and do all the underside welding and any extra plating that needs doing then. Just so this chassis, if you held it in like cyberspace or whatever and looked all around it, everything is nice everywhere on the whole chassis and it all looks kind of factory. I don't know what kind, you know, what kind of factory would make stuff like this. Um, but, you know, it, it doesn't look thrown together, it looks like it's meant to be there. So that's all for this week. We'll be back next week. I know it's Christmas, that don't matter. We'll still be in the workshop. And we'll be looking at the 60s truck and we'll be getting that whole tilt and slide thing and airbag, all, all of that. We'll get all of that working. So don't forget, click, subscribe, bell icon, thumbs up, leave a comment down below, all of that stuff. Do that now. Yeah, okay, okay. And until next week, uh, thank you very much and good night.